All right, what we're going to be working on is making a plate, and there are a ton of ways to make plates, but I'm going to start with a simple way of using what we call a hump mold. Okay, so it's a hump, and you lay it over it. Uh, the opposite of this would be a slump mold, something that you'd lay inside of and you'd be slumping the clay into. But this is the hump mold. I have a couple different ones, and I'll show you how to get there in just a second. This is, video is made assuming you know how to roll out a slab. If you don't know how to roll out a slab, I have a video uh, rolling out a slab, or actually I think it's making a slab smith on YouTube. Just uh, enter it in the search. So after you get your slab rolled out, one paint stick thick on each side, because uh, these are exactly a quarter inch. These are just paint sticks from local uh, hardware store. So I use my rolling pin. You really want to make sure that these are really even. So I'm going to double check with my paint stick on each side. I don't want to roll off my paint stick because then that's going to end up too thin. So I'm going to stay on my paint sticks and I'm going to roll just to make sure. So I can see a little bit of a line, which means it was a slightly uneven. And then I'm just going to kind of lightly smooth with my rolling pin. And that's the gist. If you'd like a more uh, lengthy explanation of rolling out a slab, uh, again, just search that video, Making a Slab Stick, on YouTube. So now I have my slab, and I have to decide what shape I want to make. And again, there's a, a lot of ways to make a plate. This one is using a mold, a plaster mold. This is made with UG1. So I could use a round plate here. I'd set it down, trace that. That would just be a flat slab, but I'll show you how to get there in a second. You could also throw this on a potter's wheel, which I'm going to make a video for that as well. Uh, that'll be throwing a plate smith on YouTube. So this one, I'm going to use the square one just because I picked it second. doesn't really matter which one you choose. This one's a square plate, um, a little bit more of a modern design, I guess. A mo more like mid-century modern. Uh, nice straight lines. So I'm going to make sure I hold this in place. I want to use a mold. It doesn't have too many bites or chunks taken out of it. If there are, I want to account for those. But again, when I cut a slab, I don't want to cut like this because then those little chunks I'm going to have to clean up. So I want to tilt my needle tool this way and cut nice and clean. Okay? All this excess that we're cutting off, I'm going to save that for other things. Uh, if you want to put a foot on your plate, which you don't have to. But I'm going to take my needle tool and I'm going to press it against the mold. And I'm going to go around and I go off off the edge because I want to do each straight on this square. So again, saving my scraps for other things. So I'm going to stay here the whole time. I want to keep my needle tool flush. I don't ever want to touch the mold with my needle tool. I mean, I can lean it against it, but I don't want to cut up here because it'll cut the mold. Also, um, I don't want to cut underneath. I don't want to undercut my plate because it makes the lip uneven. So now I'm going to take this straight here I'm going to start over here. Again, it's placed against my mold. It's not rubbing against it too much. And I just cut a nice straight line. Okay. Last two. I'm going to do this side. Again, I don't want to undercut. That one I slightly undercut because my tool started to bend that way underneath. And it was my fault. I got a little too far over here. I wasn't leaning against my wall here. Um, I can fix that with a sponge because it's ever so slight. Last one. There. I'm going to double check around my whole edge. Make sure everything's clean. Any little extra chunks. I don't want to go too slow though because then I risk the uh, human error involved. So when I go a little bit faster, I'm using more of the guides that I have here, which is my hump mold. So just double checking here. So now I'm going to take this off. I'm going to get this off of the table. usually get a little head start with my smooth rib. This one's a little wet. Okay, I get a good start. Then I'll check and see if it'll lift off, which this one will. I'm just going to sit it somewhere where it's not in a puddle, which is where it's at right now, where I rolled it out and it's been sitting for a while. So I'm going to lay this one down. So now I'm going to take 
what I just cut and I'm going to lay it back down on the mold. And I want to lay it as evenly as I can. And the way I can tell is by looking at all edges. I know I cut it exactly to this mold. So I want to line up all my edges to where I can't really see that edge when I'm looking at it exactly from the top. Okay, so I'm just maneuvering until it's just right. Then I'm going to place my hand and I want to I start at a corner and kind of move away from each corner. Um, I've seen some people use a soft rolling paintbrush. Again, oh, you can start at a corner and work your way away, or you can start away and work your way, it doesn't really matter. So now I have it pressed on there, it's as even as I can possibly get it. Then before it dries or firms up, I want to take a sponge. I'm not only pressing here on the side, I'm going to do that first, but I use my ring finger underneath here with the sponge. Um, if you want, need to do them at separate times, that's fine, but it not only applies pressure to make sure it's against the mold, but it also cleans up these jagged edges that I cut with my needle tool. So I'm going to go against the edges. Then I'm also going to make sure I clean close to that edge. So I'm going to get underneath here with my finger and the sponge. So the sponge will be underneath, but I accomplished that personally, uh, personal preference by pushing here with my middle, or excuse me, my pointer finger, pushing here, but also my middle finger is underneath here. So I go like this and rub all the way around. The corners or the points are definitely more, one of the more important parts. Okay, then I would either, um, I don't usually encourage blow drying or heat gunning, but if you need to get it off of there, you can do a little bit, maybe a minute and a half. Um, but I would encourage letting this sit for about 20 minutes, depending on the temperature outside. Uh, if it's a nice warm day, it should be ready in 20 minutes. If it's a really cold day, like right now, we're in the middle of, uh, January and it's pretty chilly and this will take a little while longer to dry but you can let it sit out for about 45 50 minutes um, depending on what you what time you have available so again I'd let it dry a little bit this one is soaking wet you also notice on this it is kind of slumping down inside again it's a hump mold but it's slumping down in the middle because there's nothing here there's a, a hole in the middle of my square so I'd let this dry I have one that I already made, Easy Bake Oven style. So this one I put on about an hour ago, maybe a little less than that, maybe 50 minutes ago. So it is going to be a little wet, especially considering it is cold. But I'm going to set this somewhere where it's not soaking wet. Actually, I need to be in the space for the camera. So I am going to set it there. But I'm going to take and I'm going to hold two points on each side. So one on each side of my square, I'm going to flip. I'm going to set it down. So this one again has already been wiped. I'm going to remove my mold. Now my sides are staying up on the side so that way if I have anything uh, food wise that or dessert wise or sauce or anything, any juices that may flow off the plate, this little arch will keep them on the plate so it doesn't go onto the table. Then I would take my sponge and really go at it with these, these edges. And this is where you can really clean up some of the edges you may have made some small errors or mistakes on. Um, you can get really creative with these too and cut out little slits and make it a little bit different shape. So I would just take my sponge and take some time. Um, if you start a little too early on this, like you flip it and you start sponging and you're adding water and it's softening, that edge will go down on you, which means you just need to put it back on the mold, wait a little bit longer, a little bit more patience will pay off. Sometimes it's not even a matter of putting it back on the mold, it's just not adding water right now. If you add water and it flops, bring it back up uh, once it dries a little bit more, if it looks good. If you think it really needs it, put it back on the mold. But it is hard to put it back on the mold the exact way that you put it on there in the first place. So, 
Right here, I got one little sharp edge on a corner. So I'm gonna clean that up just a little bit. And I'll turn and show you a little bit closer there. So that would be a plate. And again, I would clean this quite a bit more. That edge takes a long time. Really go at it with uh, craftsmanship. Um, then you, these are really good for um, Scraffito or Mishima designs, various things that uh, can help you decorate it. And again, with this round ring, same thing. I would have placed it on the slab, cut around it, not undercutting. Then I'd set this aside, grab that circle, place it on there as evenly and as centered as possible. Same thing, let it dry a bit and then clean it up. So that's a plate, slab plate over a hump mold.